About two hours north of Tokyo, there's a city with a rich history called Mito. It's the capital of Ibaraki Prefecture, a prefecture that borders the ocean. And Mito is home to one of Japan's most legendary private kendo dojos. Despite me having over a decade in Japan filled with countless cultural experiences, I've never tried my hand at kendo. I don't think I was ever really ready. To me, the idea of trying kendo was like that of entering a whole new world, and I wanted to approach it with the right mindset. So I started the morning quite early. I heard of a shrine on the ocean called Oarai Isosagi Shrine, a popular and beautiful spot to watch the sunrise. Maybe I was going to fall in love with kendo and it would become a part of my daily life or maybe it would just be one more experience in the bank. I arrived well before sunrise and spent some time trying to clear my head while enjoying the constant change of light happening in front of me. It was beautiful, almost meditative in its own way. By the way, the information about it being a popular spot wasn't wrong, and as soon as the sun came up over the shrine, it was instantly understandable why. I honestly can't remember the last time that I enjoyed an ocean sunrise, or even spending any time at the ocean for that matter. I must have been enjoying it because before I realized it, I had been there for well over two hours. The time got me thinking a bit more about the shrine itself, obviously completely distracting me from my upcoming kendo experience, and I decided to head up to the main shrine to see if I could learn a little more. While I could have opened my phone to find out everything I wanted to know, I thought I'd roll the dice and see if I couldn't get one of the shrine's priests to talk to me. I got lucky. <laughs> Mr. Yoshida mentioned that despite the shrine being a very popular spot to watch the first sunrise of the year, the most beautiful day to watch the sunrise was actually on the 29th of December. Our conversation gradually drifted into talking about kendo, and he told me if I wanted to get off to a good start, to focus on limiting my movement as much as possible rather than going for big dramatic movements. From here, our conversation gradually shifted over to talking about shamisen, and before we realized it, we were out of time and he had to get going. And off Yoshida-san goes. I really enjoyed that conversation with him. Having the opportunity to share a little bit more of the perspective of the locals is kind of been a theme of this year, so I really appreciate him opening up the time for us today. Plus, he left me with some really good advice for today's kendo training. Speaking of which, it's time to get going to that, so let's go. Alright, so let's talk history. The dojo known as the Mito Tobukan was founded in 1874, just as the era of the samurai was coming to an end. The founder, Kozawa Torakichi, wanted to preserve the lifestyles and cultures of Bushido and the samurai. Currently, the Mito Tobukan is one of the most famous private kendo dojos in all of Japan. I heard that my instructor for the day was famously strict and that expectations would be running high, but nonetheless, I was looking forward to the experience. これで、あの、殴り合いしますね。はい。今から
、筋を通すと、あっ、これを通す。危ないからね。はい。カミソリみたいな筋肉。切れる。ちょっと振ってごらんなさい。振りかさ。最近音がすれば、もう汚いね。ああ、でも難しいですね。<笑> The demonstration was quite a sight to see. There's always been something about watching the master of a craft that's appealed to me. Quickly understood why the shrine's priest gave the advice to me that he did, and it paid off because I was up next. Didn't get off to the best start though. So I will. Done. This kind of situation. いいな、今。だ。やばい。障害を。だ。やばい。障害を。だ。私はあの水戸道具館のあの師範をやっております。剣道とそれから飛ぶ道をやっております。剣道の方は幸い8段をとっております。で、北新一刀流の方は、え、おかげさまで、え、免許改善をいただいております。え、まあ、私はあの、水戸生まれ、水戸育ちで、警察会に入りまして、え、警察を、え、の仕事をしながら剣道を続いてまいりました。北新一